Hello and welcome. Today we are taking a Citroën Picasso on a short trip, more like a road test, towing a caravan which belongs to my next door neighbor. He has kindly lent the caravan for the test and is coming with me on a trip. The caravan weighs about 1.6 ton and we will hook it up to the Citroën and go for about two hour drive. Before we go, we need to hook up the tow ball and the special plate that makes the caravan hitch to the car more securely. This is a genuine Citroen tow bar that is on the car and we will see how it performs under real towing. So we got the tow ball fastened to the tow bar and we are in the process of attaching the caravan to the tow ball. Uh, we need to lower it down and clip on and then pack up some of the tools that we have out. Because the caravan is wider than the car, we need to attach extended mirrors which connect to the existing mirrors by means of rubber straps and suction cups. You can see here that uh, once it's installed, you can still use both mirrors, but the uh, outside extended mirror gives you a wider view. Up the main road, yeah. but go the Arrow Roadway, wind your way through there, and come out at Gundagai and then come back down the freeway. That's an idea. That's a Because good idea. that gives you a few turns, there isn't much traffic on that road, um, but it gives you an ability to go up hills, down, round corners and so forth. Yeah, yeah. all right. And then you come back on the freeway. So we are finally on our way. We have the caravan hooked up. We have the mirrors in place. And we are moving down the street. The caravan is quite a bit wider than uh, the trailer that I normally tow. And being at 1.6 tons, it's also quite a bit heavier than my normal load. So just getting familiar with the caravan, I'm taking it fairly easy. Plus the fact that the caravan is not actually mine, I uh, wouldn't want any kind of a mishap on our trip. So uh, we will take it fairly easy. We are in Wagga, which is a city in New South Wales, Australia. And we will be going to another town called Gandagai which is close to 100 kilometers away. So our return trip is going to be probably 180 kilometers or something like that. On our way there, I will be taking the back roads, which are fairly twisty and hilly, and traveling at the moderate speeds, somewhere around 80 to 90, I guess, at the most and I will record the fuel consumption on that and then I will come back along the freeway and we will see what the difference is in the fuel consumption between the slower driving and the freeway speeds. The car seems to be comfortable so far with the caravan behind it Obviously, on the back streets, my main concern is the width. Uh, there's not really any effort required to tow the car. And uh, it doesn't seem to notice that the caravan is behind it at all. So we are progressing through the back streets and will soon come to a slightly bigger road, still not a main road, but a little bit bigger road that will take us out of the town. And uh, the speed limits are still around 50, but uh, I don't think I've hit that speed as yet. This is our first little bit bigger road and this will take us out of the town and we will get a better feel for the caravan, certainly accelerating uh, up to the speed limit was no problem at all. Uh, I used the cruise control nearly all the time when I'm driving. Uh, so whatever the local speed limit is, I'll just set it on that. 
I'm really not interested in how fast I can get there and I'm certainly not interested in getting fined for speeding. So um, I will uh, so set the cruise control at the speed limit. Now the speedo on the Citroen consistently reads three kilometers per hour less than the actual set speed. I presume they've done it with your license in mind and hope that you don't accidentally get booked. Uh, I find it a little bit annoying because if I set the speed to 50, I'm traveling at 47. If I set the speed to 100, I'm traveling at 97 and I would prefer it to be just one kilometer under the limit, but I haven't been able to find any kind of adjustment for that. Of course the speed limits change all the time so the hardest problem is to make sure that you know what the speed limit actually is wherever you are driving and here is police catching somebody who may not have been obeying the rules quite as diligently as they should have. Especially on uh, you know industrial areas and back streets it is risky going too quickly. There's all sorts of unexpected things that can come on your way and it is generally better safe than sorry. With heavy traffic and little cars all mixed in the same area, it's uh, just best to be more cautious. And we are not the only one with the caravan on the road today. We, we may will see quite a few of those on this trip because where we are going, Kandakai, it's uh, kind of a tourist spot. People stop there quite frequently. There's a fuel stop and food and things like that. So for us, it's just a nice turnaround place. This is very, very typical countryside around Woka and most of Australia, really. Few trees here and there lots of open space and cloudless skies. We don't expect a lot of traffic on this road, although here comes an ambulance and a few cars, but this is a back road that is mainly used by locals. Anybody actually wanting to go from Woka to Kandakai would take the freeway, which we will do on the way back. Our look, speed limit is 100 from this point onwards, but we are not going to go anywhere near that speed because I will be trying to stick mainly to 80 or just to see what the fuel consumption is. I can't go any less than 80 or it will change down to the fifth gear. So in order to keep the car on the top gear and get the best fuel economy, I must travel 80 or better. Again, you can see on a, a dash cam recording there that the car is actually sitting on 78, 79, but I have the cruise control set on 80. So it can vary a little bit. Usually it does not vary at all. So maybe the extra weight of the caravan is making it vary by one or two kilometers per hour. But, uh, but like I said, when, when I just drive with the car, it sits exactly on the, on the speed and does not vary at all. <clears throat> so, if you are looking for some open space and sunshine, welcome to Woga. Come and visit us here. Here are some bicyclists going the other way, and I have the GoPro on the outside of the car so I can keep an eye on the caravan as well. It seems to be quite happily following there, but as you can see it is just wide enough to fit into its own lane. So when we have oncoming traffic it gets a little bit tight, uh, uh, but we will we'll do our very best not to hit anything. And. Uh, the caravan is following very... Oops, <laughs> that was a little bit scary. Oh, there he comes the other way from the dash cam. So this is not a wide road. 
there's only dirt on each side of the road. Normally there's a breakdown lane, but being a back road, we don't have that. The scenery is pretty much like this throughout most of Australia. We don't have forests like they have in Europe. We don't have lakes and rivers. We have dry urban country that only gets green when it rains. So we are about 25 minutes into our trip so far. And uh, we have gone a little bit on the straight roads, bendy roads, some moderate hills and in all honesty, only way I can tell that I'm towing a caravan is if I look into the mirrors or if I look at the fuel consumption, which is a bit higher than normal. Uh, other than that, the car is steady and stable. The caravan follows it very accurately wherever we go. And you just cannot feel that there's anything behind you. Another place where I do notice it is when we're going up a hill, the car will change down a gear while when the car is empty, it stays on top gear all the time. So other than the gear changes and the fuel consumption, you can't really tell you're towing. It feels just like you're driving the car normally. So 1600 kilograms in, in a caravan, I don't think it's any any effort on the car to tow the weight, but the caravan is bigger than the car and you do have quite a significant increase in the air resistance, which will affect the fuel consumption quite a bit. But, you know, these roads here, it, it is very hard to tell on the film, but we're actually going up and down and reasonably twisty road. And... Uh, it just handles perfectly. It does not in any way affect the control of the car. Uh, if you do have to slow down, you can feel the extra weight, although the caravan itself has excellent brakes. So that quickly takes over the braking function for the caravan. I have no idea where we are. We are somewhere probably halfway between Woka and Gandakai now. Uh, we are close to the Marambichi River, and uh, you can see it's reasonably green here. And it looks like we might be coming into a, some kind of a township, a village of some kind, perhaps. Uh, another car, so you know, there is, is traffic on this road. Uh, not overly heavy, uh, sheep on the left hand side there. So uh, it's it's quite quite a tourist route if you are looking for these exciting views of Australian countryside. Just having a look behind to see that the caravan is still behind us and it seems to be happily towing. You can see when I'm driving comfortably where the car is, the caravan goes slightly over the center line. So I need to really shift over a little bit when there is oncoming traffic to make sure that there's enough room for vehicles in both directions. Looks like a couple of bumps on the road. You see the caravan was sort of rocking a bit from side to side. And it seems that I was right, we, we are coming into some kind of a village that's about halfway point. Uh, I have ne no, I can't remember if I've taken this road ever before, so it's, it's new scenery for me as well. There's a lot of sheep farming, which is the open empty fields, but there's also a lot of growing of wheat and canola and other crops as well, so it's very much farm country here. I think we must be getting close to leaving the Shire or the council regional area of Wagga Wagga, 
is this welcome to Woga sign going in the opposite direction to us. So we are now out of Woga and most likely in a region called Kudamandra. Uh, here is a little township or a village, mainly a farming community with possibly school and a few other such things, but not really what you'd call a shopping center. Most of these places have a speed limit of 50 going through the town. As you can see, there's heavy pedestrian traffic, and lots of cars, traffic lights, roundabouts, so it would be very dangerous to travel more than 50 kilometers per hour through here. Or not. And just to have a look back where we come through. So we're just coming into the town on the rear view camera and traveling through the through the village and then we are not far from Kandagai. This is a, a small locality and there's really, well, it doesn't look like there's anything other than few houses, but maybe on the side street, if you go in there, there could be a school or maybe a local shop or something like that. The speed limit goes from 50 back up to 100, and we will go from 50 up to 80 or thereabouts. Uh, this is, I think, mostly cattle, maybe cattle country here. There's a lot of farming, I think mainly for meat, for, you know, human consumption. And, oh, what do we got here? There's a sign saying, beware of cows. I think what the has happened here is the farmers let the cows out so they can eat the grass on each side of the roads. Road, you can see the cows are quite worried about the traffic and are trying to get out of our way as quickly as they can. There's a farmer there who was keeping an eye on, on the cows, I guess, or on the cars, I'm not sure which one. This looks like a fairly small herd. There's only a few cows here. But it's good they eat the grass on the roadside and they may be moving them maybe from one grazing area to another. And looks like this. The other farmer at the front. So they have a front and back guard. As you can see here, we're coming to the same area looking back. There's the farmer keeping the rear guard and the cows are walking along on the side of the road, eating a little bit grass that they can find on their way. It's quite common practice to do this, uh, moving cows from one place to another or letting them on the side of the road to eat grass if there is any. There's another farmer usually at the front, uh, so the cows are traveling between the two checkpoints. Uh, we've come to end of, end of this road now, and we will be uh, turning to the right onto the road that leads the rest of the way to Kandagai. And uh, we will be able to Oh, well, that road will actually travel by the Marambici River, so it'll be a little bit greener and also a little bit more windy. So uh, here we go. We will... Uh, I wish I, I... I don't even know the name of this road, but <laughs> as a troll, you're driving the local roads, you don't really know what they're called.
as you can see, the road here is reasonably winding, and this, I guess, the south of handling of the car and caravan, uh, it goes around bends and small hills on a fairly narrow road. Altogether, I must say that I'm impressed. I, I cannot tell from the behavior of the car that the caravan is attached. It seems to have sufficient uh, power, uh, doesn't affect the steering. You can't really feel it slowing down or accelerating in any unusual manner. And certainly I would be happy to tow this size caravan pretty much anywhere with the car. Obviously our speeds are fairly moderate. You can see we're doing just over 60 kilometers per hour here. And when towing a caravan, I think you need to keep due care and common sense with you and not take unnecessary risks. I've seen many, many accidents where the caravan gets unstuck and pulls the car and the caravan off the road. So you don't want to end up in that situation if you are towing. It is uh, much better just to be careful, drive moderately, and if you find that you are blocking the traffic, well, then uh, let the other cars go past you, pull over somewhere, although as you can see, there's really nowhere here to pull over. So sometimes that can be difficult. But at the same time, you don't want to risk your vehicle or your life by trying to go faster than is comfortable with you got the caravan in the tow. So the road goes under the freeway, which we will be taking on our way back. On the right hand side, there's the Marambici River, and the road follows that into the heart of Kandakai as we are just coming in to the town. You can see the lovely autumn colors in the trees and here is the town limit. It is winter coming in, uh, leaves, leaves will uh, lose their leaves. Uh, not all leaves, of course we have the eucalyptus and gum trees and the pines which are evergreen. But uh, we are now in the, in, in the heart of the town. It's a nice small town, supermarkets and various other accommodation, caravan park, things like that. We are not actually stopping in Kandapai. We are be going to be traveling through the town and we go on the other side uh, as the story has it the dock on a taka box is five miles from kandakai or about seven kilometers so that is our destination for today and uh, we will be turning around there going through these back streets we hope to get on to the freeway for the last little stretch to take us to the Taka box, and we are now heading out of out of the town. Going up this hill, the car is equally heavy again. I am very pleasantly surprised how easily the Citroen has towed the van on these country roads and uh, if anybody is thinking of getting a van and they have the 2 liter turbo diesel version of the Picasso I don't think you have any worries with towing a van of this size 
or maybe even slightly bigger. Certainly the car didn't feel that it was straining in any way. And here you see us uh, in a rear view camera arriving in Kandakai, looking at the van. Uh, I hope you find these views useful with uh, seeing both the road and seeing how the caravan follows behind. I guess ideally I should have a drone so I could get some aerial shots, but I would probably run it into a tree so power lines, so this may well be the safer way to go. You can see on the left there's num buses, caravans, etc. parked. I'm not sure whether that's just a parking lot or whether it's maybe it's tourist information or something. I should really know the town a little bit better. I've been here a few times, but usually it's just traveling through and uh, maybe stop for a bite to eat or something like that. I think that we are nearly out of town now and we will be coming onto the junction where we merge onto the freeway heading north towards Sydney, although we're going of course nowhere near that far. We are only going another 7 k's up the road and then we'll pull over, take a couple of photos and head back towards Waka. Also we need to check our fuel economy. This has been the slow run so we uh, need to see what sort of fuel consumption we got traveling slowly and carefully and then on the way back we will be hitting the freeway or the motorway depending what you want to call it and uh, we will see how the fuel consumption changes when uh, when we go a little bit faster. If you look at this camera view here, you can see that the caravan is a lot bigger than the profile of the car, so it is catching a lot more wind, and I think that is the main contributing factor for the fuel fuel economy or the fuel consumption going much higher with the, with the caravan. Maybe not so much the weight, but definitely the air resistance. I guess I better have a look at where we are going. I think we should be coming on to the freeway on ramp any second now. Just going past the last few houses in town. And the road is starting to widen up a little. Uh, we're probably doubling up a little bit where we just went with the van, but now here's the, here's the on-ramp now, the speed limit is 80 and it should be going to 110 as we go on the freeway with the caravan, well, we are so close to where we want to go, we're not going to travel either one of those speeds, but uh, with the legal speed limit, uh, when you're towing a caravan, you're not allowed to go over 80. If you have no brakes and over 100 if your caravan is braked. So uh, regardless of what the speed limit says, maximum we could theoretically do is 100. But we're not, like, not going to do that because we barely get on the freeway and then we come off it on, on, on our exit. The freeway is a uh, divided road. You've got two lanes traveling at each direction with the wide median strip in the middle to keep the traffic separated. Uh, this road called uh, M31 or Hume Motorway runs all the way from Melbourne to Sydney, a length of about 1000 kilometers. The speed limit is 110 kilometers per hour for the whole distance and there is frequent police with radar and there's also point-to-point -point safety cameras as they call them which is a speed cameras with another way but they measure the average speed between one of these overhead structures and the next one so uh, 
you have to be careful that your average speed does not exceed the speed limit posted or they will send you a ticket in the mail as a reward for your quick driving. So we are arriving at the dock on the Takapox, about 7 kilometers on the north side of Kandagai. It's a kind of tourist destination. People pull up there for coffee and fast food and stuff like that. As you're pulling in from here, from the Hume motorway, on the left you have a fueling station for trucks and cars. And then straight ahead you have the organic fast food restaurant there. Looking back as we're rolling into it, we're coming on the M31 freeway or motorway and we are just coming into the dock on a Takapox turn off with our caravan. The van has been traveling very very well on the back of the back of the Citroen and uh, we have been driving very moderately coming this way to see what the fuel economy is and then on the way back we will be traveling pretty much on the speed limit the whole way and see what difference that makes to the fuel consumption if any but uh, hopefully you have enjoyed uh, some of the scenery on the on the back roads on our way to here and uh, or the other way is probably going to be a little bit less interesting so I won't do the exterior camera shot of the caravan because it's just going to be a freeway all the way without anything anything particular as in, in the way of, way of scenery just multi lanes and maybe a little bit of traffic. It's been a quiet day traffic-wise. Uh, uh, so uh, the freeway may be a little bit busy, but it is midweek and it's uh, mid-morning, so you don't really expect a lot of cars on the road today, which is, of course, one of the reasons why I decided to come here and do this test today. Not good road. No, it isn't. <laughs> it's a nice day, isn't it? It's a beautiful day, this is. And we are, you know, end of April. See, there's a Tesla charging station. Mm -hmm. oh, they don't exist, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's they, right. They, they do not exist. And uh, usually there's at least one car there charging. I guess we are in the early morning of midweek. Mm. Does Tesla give you um, a list of where all the points are? Yeah, it's on the system. If you say, I want to go from here to Brisbane, tell you where you need to pull up to charge and for how long. Okay. So this place here is called Oliver's. It's a fast food organic chain. Uh, you see all the solar panels there on the roof. You can charge your Tesla here. You can get good organic and also vegan food here. It, it's very environmentally friendly and healthy, healthy location to stop at. Lots of people stop here. They don't actually sell fuel, petrol or gasoline. Uh, you need to go up the road for that if you want to fill up your petrol car. What I wanted to do, because this is like the old road, I thought that uh, if I can get you to take a bit and I can drive sort of past and back mm -hmm. so that you don't get left behind. <laughs> yep. And that, uh, and that way um, I can get an exterior sort of the we should have done it back on those roads back up there. Yeah, but I don't think it's hard to make you there. There's a lot of space here. 
Okay. So I thought maybe if I'll go that way, I'll give you my phone, you can film with that. So we have pulled up here and we gonna do a couple of exterior shots of the van driving. Uh, Dave's gonna go on the other side of the road, grab with my uh, iPhone and uh, take a couple of weeks and I will drive the car away, check a U-turn and come back just so that uh, you can see how the whole thing looks looks from the outside while it's on the road uh, hopefully it looks as good as it feels when you're driving so Dave is outside with the camera and I'm here in the car I will just wait some of the traffic to go by and then I can take the van up the road and come back and uh, they will take some professional video from the outside with my iPhone. Ah, there's another car coming. Let's just wait till that goes past. Okay, and here we go. Somebody's pulling out. I better pull over and let them go first. Okay, so. Oh wow, it looks quite good, doesn't it? The van is a nice size for the Citroën. Seems to pull it without any drama at all. That looks good. I might have to. We might have to get one of those. <laughs> I don't think we can use Dave's van on a regular basis. Ah, there we are coming in. Oh, that looks really nice. Wow, uh, Citroen's a great looking van, eh? Oh, you can hardly call it a van. It's like a, like a small spaceship, really. So we have uh, arrived here in Kandakai. We did a distance of 83 kilometers. Our average fuel consumption was 10.1 and we were traveling around about 80 kilometers per hour for for that segment. Uh, I was specifically trying to travel slowly and conserve the fuel as much as possible. So uh, that's about as good a fuel consumption as you can expect towing a caravan with the Citroen C4. So I've reset the trip meter. We are in the car and now we will be heading back to Woga from here going along the freeway or the motorway. I think it's officially called Hume Motorway or M31. We are going out of here to the junction and you can see the big fuel stop on the right hand side where the trucks buses and obviously most of the cars will pull up for fueling the road is absolutely shocking here it's fallen to bits and they have not resurfaced it so i go fairly quietly so it doesn't shake everything loose i feel a bit sorry for the citroen for doing such hard work now the speed limit on the Hume here is 110, so when waiting to cross, you really need to make sure there's long enough gap. On the other side, you have your own lane, but going across here, you want to go when, uh, when there's reasonable gap, and you can get across both lanes safely. Then you have this uh, merging acceleration lane, so you can build up a bit of speed so you don't get run over by the passing trucks and uh, we'll go straight over to the left lane because we are i guess a bit slower by law we can't travel at 110 we are limited to 100 kilometers per hour because we are towing the caravan so uh, we will uh, stick to this lane most of the trip i expect most people will be passing up maybe we will catch up with some truck on a, on a, some of the long uphill climbs 
and uh, we might even go past somebody but that's not going to be very common occurrence I don't think on this trip so when we went the other way we came up through Gandakai which is uh, a small town and we are now going this way here is the first Gandakai exit coming up on the left uh, which we won't take we'll just stick to the freeway so our trip back will be much much quicker than it was coming this way and that's the old road going over the freeway and uh, you can see this a bit of traffic both ways probably not by European standards uh, Australia this is fairly normal but I know in Europe you would consider this nearly deserted road and we are, you can see the oncoming B doubles which we call the semi trailers that have two trailers behind them joined together and on the motorway all the roads go over or under so we are now coming towards the second exit entry ramp from Gandakai now here's an interesting bridge this is a fairly long bridge but there is no water as a rule under it it is when it rains and the river floods and suddenly this becomes like a lake that it goes over at the moment it's just bridge over grass but uh, before this new bridge was built uh, it often turned out that you were unable to get across uh, by new well it's not new at all it's probably been there 20 30 years maybe around that sort of time but I do remember traveling the Hume Highway before this bridge was built in the 70s and it was nowhere near as good as this you, know, you can see there's a little uh, service center on the left hand side and the South Kandakai exit and after that we have a pretty good run all the way to our exit of Sturt Highway I have set the cruise control on 100 according to the speedo in Citroen but the real speed is actually 3 kilometers per hour less than what the, uh, what the set speed is uh, so the GPS indication on uh, on my uh, dash cam tells me the real speed uh, and I've been trying to adjust that but I can't figure out any way of making it. I would like it to be just one kilometer per hour less than what I said, but uh, no luck. Now you see a lot of the big trucks traveling on here. They are called B doubles, and there's uh, there's one going the other way now. They're basically a semi trailer with a second trailer attached to them. Uh, here's one going past us, and uh, you can see it well here you got the first semi trailer then you got a second set of wheels and then you got a second trailer behind that so you basically have two semi trailers together and that is the vast majority of trucks that uh, travel the long distances between the capital cities in Australia and uh, they shouldn't be able to go much faster than me you can see my my dash cam slowed down to 90 kilometers per hour because it's building up the safe gap uh, so I was doing 97 and it slowed down to 90 and it's keeping the safe distance behind the truck we are he heading along uphill and the truck is obviously not going to be able to do 100 so I'll change lanes here and automatically the cruise control will accelerate up to my selected speed so uh, the Citroen has absolutely no trouble pulling that caravan up these long hills at the set speed and uh, we are going quicker than the truck now and uh, the, uh, there's quite a few of these long fairly steep hills and even we have slowed down to 95 so that's two kilometers less than the set speed limit but yeah it's built it up to 97 again so 
it, it, it seems to have no trouble keeping it. Most of the time it's sitting on the sixth gear, but when I hit these hills, it will change down to fifth or even fourth gear. And that uh, affects the fuel consumption, but doesn't affect the speed. So uh, one is quite happy. And then we got, of course, get long downhills as well. And again, the cruise control will change down gears to keep keep that here we come into the snowy mountains highway which connects the Hume motorway all the way down to the coast basically the Pacific Ocean going through a couple of cities uh, Kuma and Biga and uh, it actually ends on a princess highway at Biga which is near the coast and then you can go all the way to the ocean if you like The Hume motorway is in many ways a little bit less interesting than the little uh, back road that we took going the other way, but it is much quicker and easier run. So obviously if you're just traveling to get from A to B, this is the easiest way to go. Uh, we do occasionally catch up to somebody going a little bit slower than us, uh, this particular car carrier, uh, so we'll go around that. But um, obviously sitting on 100, most people are doing the 110, so uh, they are quicker than us. And that's fine, we're not in any particular hurry, and we just want to get there safe and easy. We are now coming up a very long hill again, and I'm actually slowing down here quite deliberately because we have the Sturt Highway exit to Wagga Wagga, and uh, it's a bit of a downhill downhill exit, so uh, I go slow on uh, on a crest. Otherwise, I have to just hit the brakes as soon as I get on the other side and slow down. It's a road that I take fairly regularly, so I know what to expect. So here comes our exit, and it starts going downhill and building up speed. So we are now on the A20, which is also called the Sturt Highway, and the exit goes over the Hume Motorway here, and then it's only a short distance, and we are back in Wagga. The speed limit is still 100, but I won't accelerate until we've gone over the over the Hume motorway, and then I'll uh, put the cruise control back on. So you can see the motorway there on our right and left-hand side. From here on, it's just a single-lane highway going each way. And uh, again, typically not a lot of traffic. The trucks tend to be a little bit quicker. Uh, most people tend to go slightly over the speed limit, which is good because that keeps the police occupied and brings in some revenue for the state government. But uh, I think I've done my fair share of contributions over the years, so I'm not really interested in contributing any more money to them. So there's a fair few vehicles going the other way. Again, as you can see, they are mostly B doubles going the other way. So uh, whilst this is a single lane road, there's a sign saying roadworks coming up. There is a few overtaking lanes. So um, the road widens up and gives us an extra lane, which by law you have uh, must keep to the left, but then we have 60 kilometers per hour speed limit because of the road works. So I'm obviously slowing down for that. And now it's going down to 40 kilometers per hour. So we keep slowing down and we find out what they are actually doing here. It does not really look like they're doing much. Okay, the left lane is closed and looks like 
can't really work out what they're doing, but it was a very short stretch, not really working on the road as such. And the speed limit goes back up to 100. We are now coming into the outer suburbs of the Wagga Wagga. This place is called Red Hill. There's an Air Force base here and also the Wagga Airport is in Red Hill. So on the left you can actually see a couple of planes that have been parked there for display. I don't think they're in flying condition anymore. And uh, it's uh, like, like a suburb with a small shopping center. And we are only no more than 10 minutes from the Boca Center here. I don't see any planes coming in, but uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful day for driving or flying. You can also see some of the houses on the left. There's uh, quite a few with solar panels on the roof. There's a fairly high uptake of solar panels uh, in houses. And here's our typical fuel station truck stop. A lot of trucks pull up here for a meal or a fuel fill up. And uh, a lot of trucks go through Wagga on their way to Adelaide. The ones who are going to Melbourne tend to stay on the freeway and don't come into Wagga. But the uh, inland traffic comes through here. There's a caravan and boat center, shopping center on the left. And we are, I guess, for all intents and purposes in town since the speed limit is now going to 60. You can see a lot of the trees have already lost some of the leaves and they've all changed into the autumn colors so maybe another couple of weeks and there'll be bare trees over the winter i found the gearbox changing the gears very very smoothly with the load of the trailer on it it kept the speed up fine over the whole trip and uh, there was more gear changes than normal, but I uh, didn't get any feeling that the car was struggling. It, it went quite easily up the hills, and some of those hills are quite, quite long hills, so it really does test the car out. And uh, certainly could not feel any uh, loss of stability with the caravan on the back it was just as smooth and steady as it is when I'm driving the car on its own so for um, those who uh, inquired on our Facebook page uh, Citroen Grand Picasso Facebook page about uh, what it is like to tow the caravan I hope that this video will answer some of your questions and help you to reach a conclusion what may suit you. If you have the opportunity, uh, why not rent a caravan for a day or see if you can take one for a test drive and try it for yourself to see if you're happy with it. Uh, this was 1.6 ton, 1600 kilograms, and uh, I certainly uh, don't think that's heavily laden at all for this this vehicle. It it pulled it very very easily. We are coming very very close to our original departure point. Coming back back to home, and uh, then uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can put them in the comments, and I will try to answer them. But I hope. Everything has been fairly, fairly clear. Whether you're in the suburbs or on the freeway, towing a caravan is not an issue at all. Now, I haven't tried it with the smaller motor. I know there were a lot of Grand Picassos with the 1.6 liter motor. I have never driven one of those, so I can't give you any comparison on performance, but the two liter turbo diesel with the six-speed automatic gearbox certainly performed flawlessly without any 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 concerns at all. And uh, 
on the home stretch the speed limit here is still I think 60 and we have just a couple of more turns and we will be we will be at home and we will unhitch the caravan and we call it a day there's a little bit of local traffic here apparently but uh, now we can go and uh, The, I couldn't have picked a better day for this drive, uh, you know. It'd be interesting in some ways to try it out in wet weather or in a worse conditions, but it certainly was very enjoyable driving around today uh, for no other purpose than just to take the caravan for a, for a run. And... Uh, And we still get the red lights, the only lights on the whole trip, and we got them red. <laughs> and here we are, we are pulling up, pulling up at home, and uh, then we consider our day a success without too much trouble. So, looking at the trip meter, uh, traveling at 100 kilometers per hour for most part on this trip. We were getting an average fuel consumption of 10.7. So that's nearly identical to the fuel consumption of trying to go slowly and carefully. It was 10.1, I think, and that's 10.7. So it is obviously not worth your while at all to try to drive slower than you need to. Uh, just sticking to the speed limit and traveling at the legal speed. Car is happy, fuel consumption is good, and uh, you know, you will have effortless trip. Here you can see the summary of our trip in our local area from Woga to Dock on the Takapox and back. Here you can see the trip in relation to the nearby major cities. You can see Sydney and Canberra and here is the map of Australia and what a small part of that our trip was. So that is the end of our trip and uh, end of our day. I thank you for watching. I hope that the information has been helpful and you have learned something here and you feel now more clear whether towing is for you and your Citroen. Once again, thank you for your time and see you next time.